Hello, welcome to Tati Universal. So this is Shedro. Um, we're going to be looking at A-level CIE biology. And guys, we're starting a new series today. Guess what? We're here. It's happening live. Advanced Practical Skills P3 Series 1. So we are starting the practical aspect, you know, of A-levels. Okay, we're going to be solving questions on this. So come with me. We may not be able to do the actual practical, but there are other questions you need to master, all right, about practicals. We're going to be looking at it. With time, I will take you to um, a journey, take you in a journey where I'll show you the, the live practicals, okay? Come, let's go, guys. Um, so let's look at the first question here. Is it Fig 1.1 and Fig 1.2 are photomicrographs of sections through the leaves of two different plants? So this is um, photomicrographs of leaves. Okay. So Fig 1.1 is a photomicrographs. Uh, it's a photomicrograph of a section through a leaf of Cornish heat, Erica Vagans. So. Erica Vagans sounds, you know, cute, cool. They're a very cute name, you know. So let's look at how you okay, look. That's that's Erica Vagans, guys. Erica Vagans. Wow, so beautiful. Okay. So look at this. Okay. So we're going to look at this. Um, there are possible questions they can ask you from this diagram. If you look at this diagram, you can see that how many layers of cells does it have? Okay, can you see the first layer of cell there? These large cells, they are, they are called uh, epidemies, okay? Which is B, right? B is epidemies, okay? So I want you to tell me what is A and C? What do you think A and C are? Um, you can see, that's epidemies. B is epidemies, large cells. You can see that A is palisade mesophyll, palisade. So it has tall cells packed together, palisade. And then we have um, C. C is spongy mesophyll. Can you see it? With, you know, air spaces in between, that's spongy, all right? So we have identified A, palisade mesophyll, B, epidemic, C is spongy. Okay, guys, what about if you are asked, all right, to do a plan diagram of this, um this structure here so how many layers are you expected to uh, of course don't forget that this is the one in the middle here is the um, vascular bundle so don't forget that we have um waxy cuticle which is on top of the the epidemics okay so let's try to see if we can draw this watch this guys um my drawing tool is i'm going to manage it anyway but let me see how far I'm going to draw somewhere. Okay, let me start from it. Just a part of it, all right? There we go. So, meanwhile, the drawing tool is not smooth. So, um, I'm just going to show the layers. Hmm? Remember, this is a plan diagram. So, anytime you're doing plan diagram, you start um, outermost layers, okay? Yeah, okay. Then you now follow the so you can see this just to get the outline. So this is the midrib. Now I'm drawing the midrib. Can you see the midrib here? Yeah. yeah. So I will now, of course, this is not a big one. I was supposed to draw a big one, but because of space. So the first layer I'm going to draw now, guys, watch is this. That's the epidemis. So let's look at epidemics, okay? So epidemics is the first layer of cell I'm gonna draw. So follow me, uh, just, yeah, so, okay. So make sure the lines do not touch. The, it might be tough one, but they shouldn't overlap. Uh, okay, not really smooth. The drawing tool is not smooth, but make sure you're drawing the plan diagram. Just draw it by yourself, okay? So I'm just trying to bring out the layer, okay? Yeah, 
So I've, I've carved out one layer, okay, for epidemics. That's it. All right. All right. Uh, I may not be able to draw everything. I'm just going to draw a part of this, all right? But that's just a layer. You shouldn't touch. It's just that my um, drawing tool is not smooth. I'm working on replacing it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, this is not how um, it sh the lines shouldn't touch, okay? But something like this. Um, the next layer is the palisade. Let me draw just a part of it, okay? To show you. This is the palisade. That's the next layer, okay? That's the palisade. Can you see it? So you use two lines to represent a layer. I'm not going to continue, okay? Um, the palisade, the, ne the next one is spongy. Okay, let me just extend this here. Extend it, okay? Yeah. So the next one is the spongy, which has the largest, okay? I think the entire thing is the spongy, and then at the midrib here, you now have the fast club bundle. Yes, okay? So, but you, you could, somebody could extend this, all right? If you want, can extend it. Um, we're drawing vascular, we're just drawing, a, um, of course, yeah, somewhere here. This is um, the plan diagram. The drawing tool is not well, it's not smooth, okay? Somewhere here. But guys, um, this is a vascular bundle, and maybe somewhere here is the, um, the um, xylem. So look at this. So how many layers? Let's look at how many layers we've drawn so far. So you see? So the first layer here is epidemic. That's this that layer is layer B. Epidemics. So you use two lines to represent just tissue. You don't draw cells. In plan diagram, we draw only all right outlines of tissues, not cells. Okay. The second one is this palace. The proportion is not quite big, but we're making do with the space. Okay, inside here is the spongy. Can you say spongy? This um part of the specimen with cells okay and the air spaces that is here and at the midrib here you have the, the vascular bundle the xylem and the phlegm okay so now please in in real diagram all right the lines should not be wavy okay it's just that my drawing tool is not quite um smooth right but what i want to show you is that if you are dealing with plan diagram you must show the layers right identify the layers and they use lines to all right to show the layers so this is first layer second layer third layer and then we have the inner layer tissue here we're just showing only tissue okay now the next thing i want us to look at guys this looks like a zero fight zero fights are um um they are plants that can survive in desert conditions okay conditions with low water availability so what are the features of zero five zero fifty features you see here now this one is quite distinct can you see this this is called trichomes these trichomes these are hair like structures so what they do is that they trap water vapor and lower okay the water potential between the atmosphere and the leaf, the the air space in the leaf. Okay, so that's trichomes. Okay, if you check again, you see the that the leaf is called. It's called, all right. Called means it's able to also create a humid air inside the leaf. Okay, the, the leaf is folded. You can see it's folded. So that helps reduce water loss by transpiration, because um water vapors are trapped within the leaf and they create humid environment humid air which reduces water potential okay um gradient so that's so trichomes number one folded leaf number two you can see that um the the epidemic is, is made up of large cells the large cells actually okay they increase diffusion distance right that reduces water loss 
So the, the increased diffusion is reducing water loss by evaporation and transpiration. Is that okay? Okay. So we have mentioned all of this. A is palisade, B is epidemic, C is what? Spongy. All right. Next of you. All right. This is the pre, you know, presupposed plan diagram. You just you are showing outline of tissue. You are not drawing individual cells. Okay. Let's go to the next question. All right. So look, this is another species, guys. So Fig 1.2 is a photomicrograph of section through a leaf of Himalayan Cedros, um, Cedar, Cedros Theodora. So that is it here. Okay. So you can check how many layers does it have. It has two um, epidermal layers. So one is the epidermis. The second layer is hyper. Hypodermis. Hypodermis is the layer of cells beneath the epidermis. So this is epidemics right because you see b here is epidemics just like in the format diagram a here is palisade okay c here is spongy right okay so if you are asked to draw the plan diagram i want you to pause the video and try to draw all right i'll try to draw it again all right but you know um in, i don't have a smooth drawing tool here but i'm going to show you something so I'm drawing the plan diagram, guys. So do it with me. Make sure you draw it. Just show layers, okay? So I have. Oh, okay. Let me clean this. Um, yeah. So let's look at this. So draw it again. Yeah. Okay. So this is supposed to be 10. I think there are two layers there. I'm gonna divide, I'm gonna draw the the first layer, but let's because epidemics is made up of two layers there, okay? The drawing tool is not smooth, but just I'm just showing layers, okay? All right, so this is now there's a layer that's supposed to be here. That's the first layer of epidemics. All right, uh, pardon my drawing, guys. So you use line to represent a layer of cell. Sorry, this is supposed to. So these are things that remove marks from students. Okay, so you draw smooth. So see this. It's not supposed to be touching, guys. Um, you can see that. Uh, all right. Yeah. So that's a layer. Okay. Now let's take the palisade. Okay. Palisade is has bigger proportion. Okay. All right. Okay, see this, and then we have the inner one. We have, okay, two layers there. Okay. So sorry for the background noise, but guys, um, watch this. Uh, so we have um, yeah. Let me not go far further than this. So let's go back. You can see that. Okay, so this first layer, this is the first layer here. Okay, it should always be thin. And the second layer, this is epidemics. The second one is hypodemics. Okay, then the next layer, which is here, see the cells here, that is this. The first one is this. Okay, the second one is hypodemics, which is this. The third one is a palisade, which is this. Okay, then we now have the sponge. You can see all of these places with air spaces spongy. So that's spongy. Okay, then we have the vascular bundle surrounded by bundle sheet cells. This is vascular bundle, okay? So by bundle sheet cells, not that clear. So if you're asked to identify this therapeutic feature here, all right, look at this. This is sunken stomata. Can you see? Sunken stomata help to trap. This is stomata in pit. It traps water vapor and reduces water potential gradient between the atmosphere and the leaf, okay? All right now if you check again another and that's the feature is it has two layers okay thick epidemics 
So this tick epidemic reduces water loss by transmission because it increases diffusion distance. Okay. If you check again, it has thin cortical, but it's just very thin, right? Now the and the shape of this is cylindrical, okay? Unlike the other one. So if um you have cells labeled, we have we have um it says cells labeled A, B, and C in one point two and one point two each form a different tissue. So this wants us to to okay a is palisade mesophyll like we said you can go back b is epidermis c is spongy mesophyll you can always check back all right so let's go to the next question okay it's erica vagans that's the first one and cedrus theodora as xerophytic plant with references only to xerophytic features okay describe the difference between the leaves of e vagans and seed visible all right remember we've done it before so Erika Vagans, the first one, you can see, um, accept any tree, Erika Vagans versus Cedrus. So Erika Vagans is called a road, okay? The other one is not called, it's just cylindrical, okay? So that's a zelfitic feature. When a, when a leaf is called, it, it traps more humid air, which lowers um, the water potential gradient. So Erika Vagans have trichomes, okay? Cedrus doesn't have it, okay? So let's look at no hypodermis in Erika Vega. It doesn't have second layer of epidermis. Okay. So hypodermis. Layer of cells below epidermis called hypodermis. Or layer of cells um, between epidermis and parasite mesophyll. All right. So Cedrus has, has it. Erika doesn't have it. So what Erika has is just, it has, of course, reference to layers. It has large cells. The epidermis is large cells. Okay. Erika has thick cortical. All right. Erika also has large epidermal cells. You can check them. Now, Cedarus has some stomata. Erika doesn't have it. Cedarus has cylindrical needle shaped. Okay. All right. You can see that. All right. That's it. So you can go back, check it again. Let's go to the next question, guys. So, transmission is a consequence of gas exchange in leaves. Explain why the rate of transmission is greater during the day than the night. During the day than the night. Why is it greater in the day? Okay, I want to post this video to you know solve the question. Why do we have um you know more transmission rate occurring during the day than the night? Okay, the reason is because during the day there is sunlight, okay. So the presence of sunlight causes stomata to open. Why does stomata open? Stomata opens in order for tra for CO2 carbon dioxide to diffuse into the leaf. Why? For um photosynthesis occur. So when stomata open, so water vapor can then diffuse out. So more water vapor is lost by transpiration during the day. In the night, we have okay, fewer stomata open because there's no light. So fewer, fewer water vapor diffuse out. Okay, let's look at it. Idea that stomata only open during the day. Why? Not at night, okay. Statement about gas section. Gas section has to occur. Some of the open Y to um, for carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide to move in. Carbon dioxide not required at night. Okay. Statement about transpiration. Water vapor loss via open stomata. Yeah. So once stomata opens, water vapor is lost. Very little water is lost via cuticles. All right. So that is it, guys. Just three marks. Okay. Let's look at this. This is another question, very important question on dilution. It says you will need to make a proportional dilution. Now, another name for proportional dilution is simple dilution of 10%. So this 10% is stock concentration. 10% sucrose solution, S, which reduces the concentration by 2% between each successive dilution. Is a prepare. 5 cm cube this is cm cube okay the cube should be here of each concentrations of sucrose solution complete table 1.1 to show how you prepare these concentration guys this is simple dilution there are two types of dilution we have simple and we have cereal so here we're doing simple dilution remember that in simple dilution let me just show you okay if this is the stock concentration that is when we're diluting 
right? We have other big cars you want to prepare, other concentration inside. So remember that in simple dilution or proportional dilution, that the stock concentration is constant, okay? That is our C1, okay? Our C1. So this is our C1, that stock, okay, is the same thing. So these are other ones that, that can appear as C2. So this is C2, it's also C2, but they're different C2s, not exactly the same. Okay, this is also C2. This is also C2. Okay, it's C2. So, what you're doing is you're going to take, um, want to dilute, take a particular volume from C1 add to this. Right, when you add, you now add water. You add water, okay, to dilute it. So, that's our V1 for this okay so that's v1 remember that when you added water the final volume is the volume of water and your v1 which is now your v2 so this is your v2 that's your v2 this is your v2 okay so that means guys that v2 is what is equal to the volume of stock the volume of stock is v1 okay plus volume of water you are adding distilled water you're adding to dilute it okay that's the volume of water okay so we have um sorry for the background noise um i'm close to a classroom yeah just to let you know that class is taking place here all right so now so for everyone if i want to prepare the next concentration i have to take from the stock again add okay and that's another v1 but the v1s are different okay so you're adding water again to this so you want to prepare the next one this is simple dilution how it works okay and then i add water to it okay so the same thing what you're adding is v1 okay from the stock you want to do another one okay you add do you see and then so so that's why guys this is our v1 here you have to calculate it okay this is volume of water okay so both of them will give you v2 they already told us our v2 which is five you get so you see um this is v1 plus v2 is equal so the v1 plus v water will give you v2 so our v2 is 5 plus 0 which is 5. don't forget the dilution formula right dilution formula states that c1 v1 okay equals um c2 v2 right so so in this case we need to know our v1 so v1 we need to calculate it we need to know the volume of the stock we are diluting so once you know v1 you can get the volume of water by minusing subtracting v1 from v2 okay v2 will be given to you directly or indirectly here v2 has been given to us so that v1 will be c2 v2 all over um c1 okay so now guys um they already told us here let's get our concentrations right they said we should reduce the concentration by two two percent between each dilution all right so that means watch this so reduce the stock is 10 let's draw this table okay sorry um this is you have to complete the table so we have about four other rules okay so four other rules watch this so so you can have other concentration this is four other rules you can make it five because of because of um what we call um that's what we call um in biology in every experiment we call it 
control. So this is going to be 8. It was reducing by 8 here. That's 8%. Eight so 8 minus 2, 6. This is our concentration. It's going to be 4. Okay. It's going to be 2. And the last one is 0. Okay, guys. Um, I need to get V1. So if this is my, for example, this is 10. This is 10, right? So my first C2 here is 8. So I need to calculate the V1. So my V1 there will be what? That's how much of 10, which is, is a stock, should I take to form 8? This is 8. This is 10 to 8. Okay? How much of it? So my V1 is C2, V2. C2 here is 8. Final concentration. V2 is 5. Okay? Volume of stock plus this. So that's what I'm doing, okay? And then what we do is that we go on and then this is equal to, now look at this. So V2, C2 is eight times, um, times five, which is V2, all over 10, you see? So this will give us um, 40 over 10. So 40 divided by 10 gives you what? 40 by 10 gives us 4. Do you get, guys? Yeah. So that's the V1. All right. So if I want to make 8%, this 8%, I will take 4 cm cube of 10%, put it inside a beaker, and then to make it up to 5, because the final volume is 5, I'll add 1 cm cube of water. Do you get? So this is going to be 4. I'll add one cm cube of water to make it five. Okay, how do you get six? I wanted to solve for six. So that means if I'm going to solve for six, my V1 for six will be, if I'm moving, right, from 10 to six, okay, this is going to be six now. The V2 there will be six. That's the next concentration, 6%, okay? Remember, I'm diluting using, okay, C, 10 to 6%. So how much volume of 10 will I take to add to form this? All right. Of course, I'm going to make it up to 5. So what I'm going to have here is that so I'm going to have, um, I'll have, um, so um, C2 here is 6. V2 remains 5. That's final volume. My C1 remains the same 10. So 6 times 5 is 30 divided by 10, 3. So I put 3 here. That means I'll take 3 of the stock. I'm going to add 2 of water. So what this means is that in the lab, guys, I'm taking 3 cm cube of 10% and I'm going to be adding 3 cm cube of water. Okay? Now, I want you to complete the table. Do for 4. So 4 will be what? Okay? The final, the initial volume for four will be what? That will be because I'm moving to four. Four is going to be my final concentration. C two, four times two, not no not times two times five. So C two times V two, V two is five all over C one, which is ten. So that's twenty divided by by ten, which is two. So two here, I'll add how much of water to two to make it five at three. So you see, it's reducing by one. So that means this is going to be one. Mm -hmm. I found the trend. So I add four of water. So to get zero, this is going to be what? It's going to be five. Um, this is going to be zero. Okay. So I add five of water. So this is this will form my control. It doesn't have right sucrose inside of it, guys. So this is how to prepare this table. All right. Don't worry. We're working on the drawing tool to give you something better. All right. Um, I hope you understand how we've been able to draw this step because I said 2% um, percent interval, 8, 6, 4, 2, okay? So let, let's look at the final. Um, look at this one. They say you will need to make a serial dilution of 100% milk, right? The concentration of the milk sh should decrease by a factor of 10. So this 10-fold serial dilution, is serial dilution, um, Fig 1.1 shows the list of the first two big beakers. These beakers you you will use to make your serial dilutions. 
U1. Complete Fig 1.1 by drawing as many extra beakers as you need for a sphere dilution. State these instructions. State under the beaker the volume and consumption of M available for use in the investigation. Use one arrow with a label above the beaker to show the volume of concentration of M, okay, which is milk added to prepare the concentration. Use another arrow with a label above the beaker to show the volume of W added to prepare the concentration, okay? So see what they're asking us to do, guys. Anytime you see this, this is serial dilution, the other one we did was, okay? So serial dilution, you have to have other beakers here. Okay, serial dilutions, this is tenfold. So we're gonna add three more beakers. Okay, three more beakers. Um, this is second one. So how many concentrations do we need? Minimum four, okay? So this is 100%. So we are doing tenfold. So divide 100 by 10, that's tenfold right so dilution factor is 10 so you divide by 10 so the next concentration is going to be 10 percent can you see 10 percent this is 10 percent okay 10 percent yeah so divide 10 by 10 you get the next one one percent okay because it's serious it's a stepwise dilution i'm using the preceding concentration to prepare the succession divide one by 10 I have 0 0.1 okay so these are concentrations I have to prepare so the dilution factor gives me an idea of what I'm looking for divide 0 0.1 by 10 that gives me 0 okay point zero zero one okay percent okay yep so guys this is stepwise dilution Hmm? Remember the final the final concentration you have to know it is 10 because 10 plus 0 of water is 10. Okay, so I'm taking from here. So how much water do I need to add? Right? How much of first of all, how much of this how much of this am I taking? This um hundred percent m am I taking to produce 10%? Hmm? So you just need to calculate v1, but guys. In serial dilution, once you get one V1, V1 works for everybody. Okay? You use the same V1. So remember our formula that V1 is always C2, okay? Um, V2, all right, over C1. Remember that my C1 here is, this is our C1, 100%. This is C1, okay? And I'm going to, this is, my c2 okay so once i get one i'm good to go all right v v1 is the same so i want to calculate this v1 here and that's what they say i should write up there so how do i calculate the v1 so my v2 is already known which is 10 okay this plus this um 10 plus 0 will give you 10 okay all right so guys, let, let's look at it. So C2 is 10 times V2, which is 10, okay? No, yeah, 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 yes, 10. All over V1, which is 100, yes. Okay, so this is it. So that will give me one, yeah, so one CMQ, right? So one cm cube. So that means that my v1 is one cm cube, all the way. So I'm taking one cm cube. So what you're supposed to write here is one cm cube of what? One cm cube, right? Of hundred, right? Percent, because I need hundred percent to make ten percent. So I'm diluting hundred percent, but I know I'm going to take one cm cube of that hundred percent. Okay. Um, of of dub of m okay m 100% of m all right so how much water will i add to make it 10 let me clean this how much water should i add to make it so because you have to 
show how much water you're adding. Hmm? Yes. So final volume is 10. So I already have one here. So I'll add nine. So water is nine cm cube of water. Okay. Nine cm cube of water. My water is W water. Nine cm cube. Okay. So now when I take it, look at it, guys. You see, when I take one, remember this was 10 before. When I take one cm cube, let me write it well. Okay. This is one cm cube, guys. When I take one cm cube from 10 of 100% of M, what will be left is 9. That's what they look, they wrote 9 here. So I took, it was 10 before, I took 1 and added 9 cm cube of water. Okay, so what it will be left is 9. So now what I have here now is 10. 1 cm cube from 9 plus 9 cm cube gives me 10. So um, but I'm going to take, remember guys, I'm going to also take from here to make the next one. And I'm taking the same V1, same, is the same V1. Okay, so what you're going to write here, all right, is 1 cm cube. So I'm going to take 1 cm cube, all right, of, of what? Of 10%. Okay, so I take 1 cm cube of 10%. And then when I take 1, 1 cm cube of 10%, what should I add to it? And I'll add um, 9 cm cube. This is almost the same today. Keep doing 9 cm cube of water. Do you get? Yeah, water is W. Okay. And then I take also 1 cm cube of 1%. All right. Add 9 cm cube of water. The same thing. To form 0. Point. So I take the same thing. 9 cm cube. Add okay 9 cm cube water the same thing guys so what should i write here i should write when i take one from here what will be left is 9 cm cube of this left 9 cm cube of this left 9 cm cube of this left but here when i get here to be 10 cm okay so guys um it's not hard okay so this is where we're stopping see you next we're going to explain this better um in next class thank you for hanging on please pardon our drawing tool we're working on it bye